All right, welcome back. Uh, we are Comp 397 in the winter 2018 semester, and we are week three, part one of our broadcasts. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a part two today because of time constraints, but we are going to be talking about finite state machine. Before we get in there and talk about what the heck finite state machine is, it's basically your level switcher, your state switcher, for moving from one level or one screen to the other. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We need some setup for this to happen. Before we get into that, I'm going to go up on, on the Slack channel and I'm going to go up on eCentennial for you guys and talk about a couple of things. One, I have to talk about the presentations that I saw. I saw probably 15 presentations today, right? Um, yeah, there's a lot, um, which took up most of my first sections class. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we have to talk about when it comes to the presentations uh, or the quality, I thought I thought I saw some really good ones. I saw some poor ones, uh, ones that presentations that uh, didn't really um, follow the criteria. But one thing that was uh, kind of all it kind of recurred over and over again was uh, the fact that your GDDs and some of your your changes and we need more time, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little message on Slack saying uh, the uh, Dropbox. Uh, for your um, game pitch uh, will remain open until uh, next Saturday. So that's going to be uh, if we're the, the 17th, right? Next Saturday, February 17th uh, at midnight. Um, you know, to allow you to submit uh, your or resubmit, if you will, your GDD. Right. So I'm going to put that at change in East Centennial as well. So I'm just going to go up here to East Centennial just to make sure that that's all done and good to go. Because I know some of you struggle. There's been some team issues, um, not just in this section, but in the other section as well. Um, you need some more time. People didn't come to class today. A lot of different things happened. Um, and I think what we need to start doing is thinking about what the requirements are for working on this thing. Now I've got 13 submissions out of 15 teams, right? There's at least 15 teams I saw today. Um, so please, if you haven't had a chance to submit your game pitch and GDD, again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit the folder. It says the, the 10th, so the restrictions are gonna close now on the 17th. I'm giving you an extension on that at midnight. That's what's gonna happen, okay? And I'm gonna make an end date so that it happens that worst case scenario, if you can't, for whatever reason, you wanna submit late, the latest you're gonna be able to submit is the 19th and then it will close, right? And that means like whatever you get, you get. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is I need to reopen some of your team contracts. I'm gonna open that up as well because some people weren't able to submit their team contract or they need to update their team contract. So I'm not gonna put an end date to this. Uh, I'm also gonna, I'm gonna keep the due date though, which means that it's gonna show that you've, you're submitting late, right? So save and close. So now you're, you can also submit your team contracts again or update them. Right, so that's open to you to do. So please do that if you need to, and you may. Some of you may have to. Okay, so that's going to take care of that piece of administration. However, what we need to talk about is what we did last week. We're doing some coding, and let me go get right to that. I'm going to go to GitHub. I'm going to go to Centennial College, and under that, I have this uh, a bunch of repositories. One of the ones I was working on last week uh, was Comp three nine seven lesson two B. I'm going to start with that one. That's the B team's presentation. I thought that was a pretty good one. Um, I mean, in other words, like that's the one we did together with assets and everything else. I'm going to uh, download this one as if it's a brand new one. I'm going to put this on my desktop. So I'm going to put it on my desktop here. So I'm going to start with that one. And what this is going to do is it's going to enable us to not start from scratch. So I'm starting with uh, lesson 2B, right? Here's lesson 2B master. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to lesson 3. It's not lesson 3A or B. It's just lesson 3. Um, just like we did last time, I'm going to Visual Studio Code. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to drag and drop uh, lesson 3 over here now and make some minor changes to the package.json file. So I'm going to go with lesson 3 here. I'm going to create a new GitHub repository, and it's probably going to say Lesson 3. So I'm probably going to just change all this now. So we're ready to go. 
Uh, so far, I'm not going to add any more modules. I'm just going to add what I had before. So I'm going to save this one. I'm going to create a new Git repository, right? So we need to do that too. So I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to CD into your Git repository, the, the, the folder, which is here. I'm using my Mac today. Um, and then I'm going to go do a git init. These are the commands, git add dot, git commits minus m initial commits, which is going to create a new commit chain for this particular project, right? Um, then I'm going to go up on GitHub and make a new repository. So I'm going to go back to Centennial College. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to go to add a new repository called Pump. Uh, 397 w2018 lesson three and then i'm going to take the last three things the last two things from the instructions here i'm going to copy them i'm going to go back to the terminal and i'm going to paste them and now everything that i have please follow me on this next repository which is um, again comp 397 uh w2018 lesson three that's what i'm using right now All right, and as you can see, we're kind of got our initial commit, so it looks like there's only one commit, but obviously we have a bunch of stuff we've already had from last week. We're gonna continue from there. All right, so what is it that we're gonna do? Well, we talked about uh, our game, and right now, if I was to run my game, let's just do that. And by the way, notice that whenever you see this in Visual Studio Code, this little gear, um, it says no new code update available. Always update your code, man. It's, there's always some extra stuff uh, that they give you in Visual Studio Code when you update your version, uh, bug fixes, support, uh, additional things. And I think one thing I like about Visual Studio Code is Microsoft keeps on coming up with updates to make it better and better, right? So this is a January 2018 update that I'm at now as of this recording, right? Um, and it's good. It's, 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 it adds additional support. So, yeah, what I was going to say was that let's make this thing run again. So, again, I'm in my folder structure. I'm going to clear the screen, and I'm going to use what we did last time, which is light server. So light-server, right, is going to run the latest version of my files, and we can see what we have. We have a problem. Why do we have a problem? Because, remember, whenever we download something from GitHub, we don't have any, um, any uh, node modules. I'm going to kind of controls that out of this. And what I want to do um, is, what I want to do here is I want to do a yarn and then press enter, which is going to grab everything I need from yarn. Now, this is funny because I'm using both yarn. Uh, in the previous version, I used yarn and um, NPM, but now I'm just using yarn for more of my, more of my packages, right? And if you look, I have a node modules folder now that has everything I need for my project. If I go back and I just do a light server now, we should be able to kick things off and I have my hello world. All right. Now I am missing my button. Notice I'm missing my button. And there was a problem last time. If I go and look and inspect on my button, I can see that I have an error. And one of the errors we kept getting is this cannot read the width property. I talked about this, how reading the width property of an object until it's created, there is no width property. And so we have a problem with this. And we can fix it now by using preload.js. So one of the things we're going to be doing today is talking about how I can preload all my images. I need to do this, right? Before we start off with our, with our FSM, our finite state machine. So going back to the project, one thing I want to do is I want to press Command-Shift-V or Control-Shift-V on the PC and start off our watch task, right, which is going to make my TypeScript converter start working. So transpoff between uh, TypeScript and JavaScript, all right? So now I'm ready to go. I've got everything ready to go, and I have a problem with my core module. So if I go back to my scripts core, you can see in the game.ts file, um, I'm just going to hide this one for now, you can see that I have in the init function, I just call my start. And I did that as a stub. It doesn't do anything. What I would really like to do is instead of me putting in the paths here like this, I want to preload all my images. I want to preload my images and all of my sounds eventually as well, right? So how do I preload? Well, that we have to use preload.js to do that. So I go to preload.js. Notice how, how it fixed. Take a look. It kind of fixed itself, right? It went like to here and then also now I'm okay, right? Why? I transpiled. 
And that was weird that it actually worked this time around. But it's a glitch. Don't let it fool you. It's a glitch. It looks like it's working, but it's not. And I want to fix it for good. I'm going to go to my new tab and I'm going to go to uh, CreateJS. And I'm going to go to preload to show you what preload means. So if I look at the docs for preload, it kind of tells you this. You need some kind of structure where I'm going to create something called a queue. Think about this as an asset manager object. I'm going to load everything into an object. And then I'm going to call that object when I want to use something. It's almost like a space where I'm going to load up all my images and sound files. And then I'm just going to call them into existence when I need them. And the reason why preloading is so important for web, web uh, game programming is it saves you time uh, in game. It makes you more performant, right? And it, and it takes care of that issue where when you're on a server, I, I allow myself to get fetch everything. Give me all my images first. So sometimes what happens is we need this loading screen. The loading screen actually loads all the content that you need for your level, as well as all the images and sounds and other assets, right? And we're going to do that by using this queue idea. So we're going to use CreateJS load queue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a queue, a global object for now. Later on, we're going to make it its own static object that we're going to be using inside of our code. For now, we're not going to make it a static object. We're just going to make it an object that we're going to pass, right? Um, I, at least I think that's what we're going to do today. It depends on how things go. So I need this structure in my load queue. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is inside of my init function, way at the top, right? I need an object to do that. And I'm going to create one. I'm going to call this thing, for now, let's just call it asset manager, OK? I'm going to call this thing asset manager. The asset manager is going to be of type createjs.loadqueue. That's what it's going to be. So I'm actually using the preloader here, right? Now, even though I declare it here, I'm, I'm actually not instantiating it until I get to here, until my initialization started screen, which is on line 14. Okay. Notice that I have my start right here. I'm going to get rid of that in a second. So what I need to do is, just like what it said here is, I need to instantiate a new object of type load queue. That's the first thing I need to do. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say asset manager is equal to a createjs.loadQueue object. And what this does is it creates the container that I'm going to be using for my queue, right? My asset manager. Further down, you can see that I want to use this install prog, uh, plugin because I'm going to have sound. That's for sure. This part here, I'm going to have sound. So I'm going to use this plugin, install pr plugin here. That's just part of it, right? So I'm going to say asset manager dot install plugin. And then we want to, we want it to install a create JS, oops, create JS dot sound is what I want to install. So a sound, it's going to be a sound object. So I want basically that um, my asset manager could also load sounds. That's what this is. Asset manager uh, can also load sounds. So this does. All right, so here's my asset manager. I create my load queue. This creates the uh, asset manager object. That's what it does. That's a container for everything. And then I'm going to load my sound in there and my, and my objects, right? The other part to this is where I have this manifest, this part here. This is my manifest. And I use load manifest to do that. I don't have a manifest, and I can create this as a, an object. What do I mean by this? So I can make another object up here on line 12, right, called, you know, uh, asset manifest. So two objects, the manager that holds everything and the ma the manifest, which is of type object, right? Now, uh, let me point this out to you. What it's really going to be doing is, uh, for now, what I'm going to make it is a, a type of any. And remember when I talked about this, if I call it a type of any, I'm really saying, to, I'm really looking at TypeScript and saying, you know what, TypeScript, forget, I'm not even going to use TypeScript. If I say type any. So for now, it's just a placeholder, OK? That's what the asset manifest is. So I'm going to say something like this. Asset manifest is equal to, and notice that I have this part right here. I'm going to just copy this for now. You can see that it's an array. That's what it is. 
it's an array of objects. That's what it is, right? That's what my asset mani manifest is, right? It's an array of objects. And this array, right now it has an image, and this is an example of how to do it. The ID for the, ma the manifest talks about the name, the friendly name we're going to use in the image. But you can make this whatever you want. For example, I can make it call, I can make, uh, call it a click me button. So I have a click me button. Here's an example of the, of the thing. So click me button. And we know that in my assets, I have under assets, images, I have this thing called click me button dot ping. So I can put that in there. So I can say, well, I want you to go to assets, right? Images and put in click me button dot ping. That's the, that's the actual path of the object I'm loading. Click me button dot ping. If I took the any away, let me just take the any away for a second. Just make it nothing, right? And if I hover over this, you can see what it is. The asset manifest is actually an object of type any, right? Because it doesn't understand what what it what this thing is. It doesn't understand what this is. It's actually an array of objects. That's what it really is, right? So asset manifest, if I hover over, is really an array of this type of object. And this, my friends, is called an asset. Hey, oh my God, what this makes me feel is I need a class that gives me two, uh, which, I, which I will, of type asset, think about this, that has two properties, ID and source. Both of them are strings, right? And I'm going to take that asset and I'm going to attach it to the asset manager's array of assets. So really the asset manifest should be an array of assets. That's what it should be. I don't have that yet. I don't have that structure. But eventually we're going to get there. So really, that's what this is. It's really uh, asset manager manifest is an array of any. That's what it is, an array of type any, right? An any array, right? If I hold on to this, you can see that now it takes on that aspect. Whatever I put here happens over here. An array of type any. We don't know what type it is, but it's some kind of weird asset here, which would, would we have this, okay? So now that we got our asset manifest, which is just an array of assets, right? We're going to use the asset manager to load the manifest. We're going to say asset manager, load manifest, and we're going to point to our asset manifest. Okay, that's what this does. So we created a manifest, a place where, think about a manifest as an array of all the assets that we're loading. And then we're loading it up. Okay, cool. Well, it's going to take time to load. This is where the whole idea of preloading comes into play. I want to wait until all the assets have been loaded before I start my game, right? So then I need an event. And here's the event, right? On when my asset man manager completes the loading, I want to call the start function. That's what it's going to be. So here it is. I'm going to say something like this, asset manager dot on complete, right? I want to call my start function. And so that means I don't need to do this. So if you scroll down, see that where I have my start right here, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm not going to call it by itself. It's going to call start when it's finishes loading. Sometimes what we also see is that we're also going to pass in the, the, um, a context. We're passing the value of this to that to the start. Sometimes I need to do that too. So I'm going to put this as the final way of doing it. All right, cool. So I've recompiled everything. I've got my preloader. This is the preloading step right here, right? So my init function preloads preloads uh, assets for now. We're going to talk about commenting later on where um, I have a certain comment style that I want to use. Okay, great. So I added my preloader. Let's see if it works. The way to check to see if it works is we have to use it. Right now, we're just loading them. We're not doing anything with them. So how do I preload? Well, notice that I've passed in my objects.button, and I'm passing in a path. Here's where I'm passing in the path. And what I want to do is I want to change my objects.button to take a reference to my asset manager. Right, that's what I wanted to do. And the name of the button that I'm loading. So 
what I'm going to pass it is instead of passing this path, I'm not going to pass it the path anymore. I'm just going to pass it the asset name. So this is going to be called click me button. Okay. Now notice what this is going to do is up here. How do I get that? Because that is the friendly name that I've assigned inside of my manifest. My manifest, I said, hey, whenever I say click me button, that's going to refer to this. That's what the ID and source uh, key value pair are. Okay. So, yeah, I wanted to pass this, but also I want to pass a reference to my asset manager. So I'm going to pass in asset manager. And notice I get an error because my button was not designed this way. My button is listening for an image path, but I'm giving it something else. So we have to redesign my button for a second. So I'm going to go back to my button. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go back to um, my objects. I'm going to go to my button.ts file. And inside here for now, for now only, I don't just want an image path, right? I want the image string. So I'm going to rename this thing instead of image path. I'm going to uh, rename my symbol to image string, right? That's what I'm getting, the image string. And I also want to get a reference to my asset manager. So I'm going to say asset manager, which is of type createjs.loadqt. And that satisfies my requirements because what I want to do in my button now, right? What I want to do here in my button is not pass the image string into my superclass, which is my, my bitmap, but rather do something different. So in my bitmap now, I'm not passing my image string, right? I'm passing the loaded item, which is a blob. It's actually a blob that I'm loading in there. It's actually a completed loaded item. It's, 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 a, it's actually data I'm passing in, right? So I got to do something different. I got to say something like this. Asset manager dot. And again, if you, if you want to see how it works, um, get results. And I want to get result of the object that is called whatever the image is called. All right. So that's the new, the new uh, syntax I need to use. I'm using my asset manager to pass the result of the image that I've loaded into the superclass of the bitmap. That's what's totally different. Okay, now that I've done this, my super class is actually can measure my actually my my button class can actually measure the width. And now I can do something totally different. Instead of just doing this whole X and Y business right for my button, I can actually uh, use the use the registration values here. So inside my constructor, I can do something like this. I can say this dot reg X is equal to this dot get bounds, right, dot width times 0 0.5. I couldn't do that before because I didn't have an object. Now I do. And this dot reg y is equal to this dot get bounds dot height, right, uh, times 0 0.5. Why can I do this now? Because of the asset manager. The asset manager gives me an object. This is the object that I'm getting from the asset manager. And because I have an object, I can measure it. I can get bounds, right? Before, there was no object until I create the new button. And so therefore, it would be undefined. But now I will be able to do this. So going back to my, um, so I modify my button. And going back to my uh, game.ts, you can see that later on in my button, I would do this now, right? I would get bounce, right? And now I don't have to do this anymore. I can remove this part because it's now part of all my buttons. So I guess just a recap, recap of what I just did, because um, this is confusing to some. I created an asset manager, which is of type load queue. It's a container that holds all the assets that I want to load. I also need something called an asset manifest, which keeps track of, it's an array of assets that I'm loading, right? So the asset manager refers to an array of assets that's been loaded, which is in the asset manifest. The asset manifest is the array. The asset manager loads the array. That's what it does. So if I scroll down, I use this new object. I created a new container. I support sound. That's what this file, this one does. And then I load the manifest. I, whatever this, I, whatever I've told it to load, I actually load in here. And once I've done that, when I'm completed, I, I call my start method, which sets up my stage, 
and everything else that I've done before. That's what it does. So it uses an event. Now, this enabled me to change my button class. Here's my button class. It enabled me to change my button class. And instead of put it, uh, passing in just the image string uh, or the image path, I'm now passing in an actual object, a container, which is the bitmap data into my bitmap. That's what this is right here. And then because I'm passing a uh, data, I can measure how big it is. And that's why I can put this back. OK? Let's see if this works. I'm going to save everything. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to save all, which is going to recompile everything. And now I should be able to go back to my demo and see everything work as normal. OK? Let's put this up on GitHub so you have it. So I'm going to go to GitHub. I'm going to say added preloader. It is preloader. Right? And I modify my button. Sorry, I need to add all this up here. Okay, I'm going to push this to uh, GitHub. So you should have all my code now up on GitHub, all the changes. All right, this is great. Um, I like it, but it's not what we wanted to do today. This is just one part. For the next hour, I'm going to focus on creating my finite state machine. So how do I do that? What is a finite state machine? Well, I want you to think about it in terms of I've got my start menu, I've got my game, and I've got my end screen, right? Start screen, game scene, end scene. And what I want to do is I want to create a container, right, that holds my game scene. And I want to be able to create my container and get rid of my container. That's what I want to be able to do. Think about this as different states of the game. One state is the start state, start screen, right? And then when I click the start button, it takes away the start screen and it shows my game scene. And then when I play the game for a while, if I die, it takes away the start screen or the game scene and shows me my game over scene. So I need three states at minimum. I need my start state, my game state, my play state, and my game over state. Those are the three states I need. But I need to be able to put them in a container, each one of them. It's almost like the container is going to be added to the scene not individual objects. I don't want to add my label in my button to my scene or to my stage. I want to add my label in my button to this scene object. Well, we have that. We have a container class in CreateJS. If I go back to CreateJS, and if I look at, um, if I go back to um, the CreateJS docs, under EaselJS, if I go to EaselJS in the documentation section, there is something called a container object. And I've talked about this last week. The container, what it is, is it's a nestable display list. That's what it is. That allows you, like it says here, to work with compound display elements. I can actually put stuff inside of my container object, which means I want to put my button and I want to put my label inside of this container object. And then I want to take the whole container and attach it to the stage. I want to do stage.addchild, whatever the container name is going to be. The container is going to be my game, the game container, if you will, or the scene. So I need to make something called the scene class, and it's going to extend the game container, or this container object. So let's make a new object. I'm going to make a new file. It's going to be called scene.ts. So this is my scene object. My scene object is going to look like this. I want to say uh, module, right, objects. And inside my module objects, I'm going to export my class that is the scene class, which is going to extend CreateJS oh, <laughs> dot container. So what this does is it says, hey, I have a container, and I'm going to make my scene the container object, right? It's going to be called scene. And my scene is really going to be a super class, like an abstract class, if you think about it, right? I'm never going to make a scene object of type scene. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to make a play scene. I'm going to make a, a game over scene. I'm going to make different kinds of scenes. In my scene, I'm going to have... Uh, instance variables, right, or scene variables. I'm going to have 
uh, properties, so public properties. I'm going to have a constructor. I'm going to have private methods. And I'm going to have public methods. All scenes will have this, right? In the constructor method, if I talk constructor, right? The constructor method is going to call the super constructor right now. And the super constructor can be empty because containers are always empty starting off, right? So this is nothing new. However, from a public methods perspective, I want my scene to have a start method, which is going to be public. And it's going to return void. And I want my scene to also have a public update method, which is also going to return void. So why am I having a public update method? The update method is going to be called during the game's update function, right? That means when I call the game's update function, the scene that's being called is going to update. And then I'm going to add anything I need to update in the scene, right? Um, I'm going to add that in, um, you know, for all my objects. All my objects, are, all scene objects are going to have a start method. All scene objects are going to have an update method as an example, right? And there might be other things it has. But for now, this is all I want my scene to do, right? It's just a simple container that I'm going to, um, and I'm going to add other things to it later. So here's my scene class. My scene class probably should have access to my asset manager, right? So chances are I want to pass my asset manager into my scene class, right? If I don't pass my asset manager in my scene class, I won't have access to it for now. Later on, we're going to make an asset manager class that has its own assets, right? For now, we're not going to do that. It's too much to do in one day. So we're just going to say uh, we want to take, we want to pass in an asset manager. And the asset manager uh, that I'm going to require is going to be of type, for now, createjs.loadQ. Uh, and so that's what it's going to pass in. And what I want to do is I want to attach it into a public property. It's actually a public instance variable. But for now, we're making, going to make it public. And we're going to call this the asset manager of the actual scene. What we're going to do is we're going to say that in the constructor function, we're going to say that this asset manager is equal to the asset manager we pass in. We're just passing a reference, right? So I can access all my assets later. I don't have assets right now, but I know I'm going to have assets. So I'm passing my new asset manager into my scene. We're going to pass other things in here as well. But for now, this is good. Great. I got my scene class. I made a new object, but guess what? It's not going to work. I need to attach it to my index.html because that is the manifest for my entire game. So going back to index.html, I'm going to attach my underneath my preloader and everything else, my label and my button, right? I need to know about my scene object somewhere. Let's just put it down here. So I'm going to do a new script, which is going to be dot slash scripts, dot slash objects. And then scene.js. So I'm going to pass in my scene object. For completeness, right? In my uh, core, in the core of my folder, which is I'll be here, over here, I have a references file. And notice that I have my label and my button. I'm just going to pass in a reference to my scene as well. Because later on we're going to we're going to worry about this. Not now. Scene.ts. This is an explicit reference to my objects. And my references uh, file gets called from my game.ts. So notice at the top it gets called, right? This is great. So what I can do is I can create different scenes. But I want to create three scenes, right? I want to create my, my start scene. I want to create my, you know, my game scene and my, my, my over scene. And I want to use these states. I don't want to know which one it is. But I want to create somehow a kind of enumeration, right? Anyone know about enums? You guys should have learned about enumerations in C Sharp and stuff like that, enums. 
I want to create enums, and you can do that in C plus in uh, in Java uh, TypeScript. So I have my scripts. I have my core. I'm just I'm just getting ready right now. Believe it or not, I'm getting ready for my my fi finite state machine. Right. So I've got my scripts. I've got my core. I've got my objects, and I need another folder called config. I'm going to make a configuration folder where I have my config for my entire project. So I'm going to go to right script, right click on scripts. I'm going to go new folder. I'm going to create a new one called config. My config folder I'm going to use to keep track of the configuration of my game. And I'm going to have different files for different kinds of configuration. So think about how this reads. Scripts, config, and the name of my configuration. Example, scene. Scripts, config, scene.ts, my scene configuration, right? So I'm going to do that in here. So I'm going to go in my config, make a new file called scene.ts. And inside my scene config, the module is going to be different. The naming of, is going to be slightly different. The name is going to be module. And instead of objects, it's going to be called config, a new type of object. And inside my, uh, my config, I want to export this new enumeration, right? That I'm going to call um, scene. In my enumeration, what I can do is I can start labeling my uh, my scene. So I can do things like, for example, I can start off at my start. Here's my start, and then I'm going to also have my um, we're going to call it my play scene or my game scene or whatever you want. Let's call it play scene for now. And then my over. Now, if you notice in my enumeration, if I hover over them, you can see that my enumeration defaults to zero. Play is number one and over is number two. Why do I have this? Because this way I don't have to remember which one is which. I'm just going to remember the, the friendly name for my scene, right? So the start scene. Or my, and when I do my check, I'm going to do a switch statement that switches between my start scene or my game over scene or whatever. When I save this, what it compiles to, let's take a look at what it compiles to. It looks like this. Look at the JavaScript. Pretty crazy, right? I'm actually creating a reference for each of the objects that are in my scene, a, a key value pair, if you will, right? So you don't have to know this. You just have to know this. So this is what enumerations look like. For, you, for more information, you can see the TypeScript that documentation. So if I look at TypeScript, under TypeScript, TypeScript has some fantastic documentation. If you look at documentation, and if I go to handbook, you can see that there is a section on enums, right? So if you want to know how to do an enum, you can see that's exactly what we do. We call enum, direction, and you can start uh, looking at different kinds of enumerations that can help us when it comes to uh, organizing our code. Okay, that's what it does. So hopefully that'll help with us later on. Okay, cool. Now that we have config.scene.start, that's going to be the uh, the scene that we're using, right? The enumeration, if you will. And uh, by the way, in my configuration for scene, maybe I'll put other stuff in here. But one thing I need to remember to do is in my index, I need to go in my index.html, I need to add that in. So here's my scene. So somewhere I need to put in my scene enumeration. So I'm going to put this before my scene file. This config should always come pretty much first before anything else. So you can see in my objects, I'm going to put this other file called scripts config and then scene.js. Config. There's the objects, which is a new object, the new scene class, and config, which is my enumeration. Two different things. Again, just to follow up for completeness, I don't have to do this right now, but I will anyway. I'm going to go to my core. I'm going to go to my references. And I'm going to add in that reference. I'm going to kind of copy this one. And in my reference file, I'm going to put in uh, config.scene.ts, which is going to help me attach my configuration so that it's not lost. We may move this around later. OK, so cool. So I've got everything that I need um, to get my stuff going. Now I'm going to start programming, finally programming my scene. So here in my game.ts, I want to create a scene object, right? But here's what's going to happen. My scene object is going to change. I'm going to have my current scene. And my current scene, I'm going to kick off as 
a new scene, right? It's going to be a brand new scene. My current scene is going to be um, the object that I'm going to load, right? And I need to refer to a scene that I've already have, a scene class, a scene object. Well, guess what? In my main, I don't have anything talking about my scene class right here, my main. But in my main function now, this is where I'm going to put in my finite state machine. So I'm going to wipe all this stuff out, the button and the hello label. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. Even my game started. I'm going to get rid of that too. Because this is this main area here is where um, I'm going to start doing my finite state machine. Here's what the finite state machine is going to look like. I'm going to create a switch statement. And I want to switch. It's not going to work right now. Okay, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. The switch statement is going to switch something called the current scene. We don't have this yet. In my current scene object, right? There's going to be a couple of cases. If my current scene is equal to what? Config dot scene dot play, right? Or dot start. See how that worked? Then I'm going to do some stuff, right? So here's my this is my pseudo code. Do some stuff. And then I'm going to do my next one, which is my, if it case, it's the config.scene.play, right? Do some other stuff, whatever the other, the other stuff is going to be, right? And what if it's my, if my main, if my current scene is uh, config.scene.over? Well, if it's the over scene, then, you know, do the final stuff, whatever that is. I don't know what that is yet. So really, that's my finite state machine. I'm switching between my start scene or my play scene or my over scene. But someone's going to tell me what my current scene is. That's what's going to happen. Right? I got to change my current scene. And whatever it is, whatever my current scene is, I'm going to call main when my current scene changes. All right? So that's what's happening. So current scene is going to change. I don't know what it is right now, but I can set up my current scene, right, as an object. Current scene is going to be of type, it's a number, right? I don't know what it is, but it's going to be a number, right? So I can set it up as my game variable. I can come up here and say, well, let current scene, right, depending on what my current scene is, whether it's my game over scene or whatever, right, it's going to be a number, right? For now, the way I've set it up. And what I want to do is after I finish loading my assets, so I load my assets up, and before I call main, before I call main, I'm going to create my current scene. I'm going to say my current scene, right, is equal to config.scene.start. Does that make sense? I'm going to start off with my current scene for the first time. I'm only going to do this one time, right? And then I'm going to call my main, right? My main is going to be called. And when my main is called, right now, current scene is good. I'm going to call my start scene. And what am I going to do with my start scene? I need to create this container, this new scene object. I need to instantiate a new scene object. So that's one thing I got to do. Let's do it here. So I'll say, so here's my pseudocode. Instantiate a new scene object, right? That's what I need to do. And then add, add the new scene object. To the to the to the uh, stage, I need to do that. Furthermore, I should probably get rid of everything on the stage. So I should probably do something like this. I should probably say, you know, uh, remove all current objects from the stage. That's what I need to do. I don't want to have any current objects beyond there. I want to get rid of all the objects, right? So these are the three things I'm going to do. I'm going to remove all objects, instantiate a new scene object and then add the new scene object to the stage, which is effectively going to make that scene object appear. It's going to make it appear from nowhere, right? Okay, but I don't have a start scene right now, okay? I don't have a start scene, which means I need to make one. Let's make a new start scene. So we have config core objects. Let's make another folder called scenes. So scripts, new folder. We're going to make a scenes folder. In my scenes folder, I don't have anything in there right now, but I'm going to make a start scene. 
So I'm going to right click and put, say new file. And then the new file that I'm going to create is going to be called start.ts. Hey, here's my new start scene. I haven't made it, but we know two things. It's going to be part of the scenes module, right? So module scenes. And then we're going to export a new class that we're going to call start. And we can call this start scene, if you will, right? Our start scene, right? Which is going to extend, right? Our new, our objects got scene object. Because we created a new scene class. We created a scene object, right? It's going to extend it. We're going to make a new version of the scene, right? We're going to add stuff to the scene. Again, we're going to have some private instance variables. We're going to have some public properties eventually. We're going to have some a constructor. We're going to have some uh, private methods. We're going to have some public methods. And the two public methods that I want to force to have, uh-oh, wait a minute. If I'm forcing to have public methods, in my mind, if you're an object-oriented programmer, you should think interface. I'm making an agreement. I'm making a handshake. I want all my uh, my scenes to have a special interface. They must have the following methods, a start method and an update method, and maybe even a reset method, right? I'm going to have these three things in my mind. I'm thinking about them, right? So if I do that in my mind, I'm thinking I probably should have, as an object-oriented programmer, an interface that helps me do that. As an example, something like I something about, right? For now, though, we're not going to do that. We're just going to continue. But um, later on, for optimization purposes, we may create uh, an interface that helps us. From the constructor function, we need two things. We need to pass in a reference to my asset manager, which I'm going to pass along. So here's my asset manager. This is going to be, for now, of type createjs.loadq, just like we did last time. And we're going to pass it, uh, this asset manager to the superclass which we can do now because I created a, a path for that later on. Here's my asset manager. I also know that I want a couple of things here in my scene. I need to have my, in my public methods, I need a start method, public start method, which I'm gonna override. I'm overriding my original method called start. And I'm also gonna override my public update method. And one thing I'm missing, which I forgot to put in, is a main method. Start initializes stuff. Update updates my scene. And my main method, which I forgot to put in, into my scene file, which I'm going to do now, actually does where all, all, where all this stuff happens, where I kind of do stuff in my scene. So the start, update, and main. I'm going to go back to my core, my objects, and just change my scene class to include that too. Because later on, I'm going to check to see if it's a scene. You're going to see why later. You can't, I can't explain everything now in no time. All right, cool. So I got my start method. I've got a, some basic stuff in here. Well, let's add those buttons back in, right? I want to add in my uh, private instance variables, I want to add an object, which is going to be private. And I'm going to make this object uh, use underscore for my private names. It's going to be the the welcome label, or you know that's the new scene, the start label, right? So we're going to call this the welcome label, which is going to be of type objects dot label. I'm also going to have the start button. I don't have that yet, but I'm going to make it private start button, right? Which is going to be of type objects dot button. Okay, so it's those two things I want to make, right? In my start method, I can initialize stuff. I'm going to use my start method to initialize or, you know, create objects. So in my start method, I'm going to create that. I'm going to say that my uh, this dot underscore start uh, start or welcome label, right, is going to be of new a new a new uh, objects dot label. I'm going to pass in the the label string, which is going to be welcome, right? 
or you know, uh, this is my game or whatever the game is called, right? And then some kind of font size. I'm going to keep something like 60 pixels this time around. So I'm going to call pass in 60 pixels, right? And then the font family, which is going to be consolas for now. So I'm going to keep consolas as a font family. My font color, I'm going to make it black. So okay. And now my other things I need. Now these are optional. But I'm going to make my 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 font my welcome uh, you know object uh, centered. So it's going to be 320 uh, by 240. So 320 by 240 and is centered is true. Okay, cool. So that's my welcome object, right? And now I'm going to make my uh, start button. So the start button is going to look like this. This dot underscore start button. Right, it's going to be a new objects. Notice I'm just creating my objects here in my start method. Objects dot button. I'm going to pass in the name of the button, the asset manager, which I'm going to pass in. I'm going to pass that along, asset manager, and the name of my button, which is going to be called start button. I don't have it yet. I will make it. My x and y coordinates, which I'm going to say 320 for my x, and instead of 240, we're going to make it around 300. Right. Now, why is this hovering like this? It says, did you mean the instance this dot? Yes, I did. That's the start method. So start method, all we're going to do in the start method is initialize uh, our you know, objects, our game, variable, game variables and objects. That's what we're going to do here in the start method. Every time we do a start, we're going to do that update. We're not going to call anything up to update right now. Well, we could. Uh, in our main method, though, this is where all the love happens, right? This is the game, the main game, where everything we're going to do. So, um, so this is where the fun happens, right? And in my main method, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to add objects to the scene, right? So I'm going to say something like um, this. Now, here's something interesting. I don't have a reference to the stage. Right? I don't have enough reference to the stage. My stage object is something that I'm going to add my scene object to. I'm going to go scene dot or stage dot add child and whatever my scene name is, start scene as an example. However, I know that my container is going to have a parent object. So what I can do is say something like this, right? That the parent stage object, whatever the parent object is, the stage object that belongs, that belongs to the parent is the one that I want that I want to add into uh, this scene. I want to kind of add this object to the scene. For now, though, we're going to say uh, this dot add child, and we're going to pass in a reference to uh, the object that I'm passing in, which is this dot uh, welcome label. Notice that I'm adding this to this to this object. This object that I'm passing, which is a scene, is a container. I'm attaching my start my uh, uh, my welcome label to the container object, which is this. So, just to give you an ex example, add the welcome welcome label to the to the uh, to the scene. That's what we're doing, right? And then I'm going to add the uh, the start button to the scene. And it's going to be this dot add child, this dot start button. Okay, this does. So those two things are going to be added to this container. Now I need to add this container to the stage. I don't have this container yet, but if I did, I would add it to the stage. So we're missing a couple things. I don't have a button. I don't have a start button. I need to create one. And I'm going to do that. We already have another button. We have a button called uh, click me button. I'm going to change that button to say start. I need to do that. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty much ready to go. One thing I also need is a click, some kind of click event for my start button. So in my, uh, after I add this, the, the button to the stage, or the scene, I'm going to say uh, this dot underscore start button dot on click. Got to do something, right? 
I'm going to call the start button click event. And it's going to be a private event, this dot underscore start button click. Right? I don't have that event yet, but I'm going to make it for the event handler. So I'm going to go up here above main. And I'm going to create, actually, what I'll do is I'll put it in the private section. Because this is the private, the public section. And in the private methods, right, which is up here, I'm going to make a private instance method. So I'm going to say private. We're going to call this uh, start button click, which is going to be of type void. That's this, right? And when I click my start button, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to change, I'm going to change, I want to change my scene object. I want to change my scene object, right, to something else. However, however, let's think about this. I don't have access to that object that I want to change because my scene object is locked as a variable that's inside of my uh, my game class. My game class locks up all my all its variables. It's locked up my assets. It's locked up its uh, the scene, that's current scene. It's locked up all that stuff, right? So what I could do is I could pass in my scene again, my my uh, my current scene, right, as a reference, or I could return my current scene, whatever that is, right? I could return my current scene. And what I can do is I can return that on update. I can say something like that the update doesn't just return void, but returns a scene object for now, my current scene, which is a number. But, you know, it's like I need one structure to, to help me with another structure, to help me with another structure, to help me with another structure. And pretty soon I'm going to go crazy. Right? It's almost like I need, and this is something where I'm going to do right now, guys. I didn't know if I was going to need it or not, but I'm, I'm going to do this to help you because we don't have time. We need something like a static game object that can hold all these things at the global level that I can just refer to. That I don't have to pass around. I don't want to pass the baton from one scene to the other scene to the third scene to the fifth scene and keep doing that, especially with common variables. So before I finish my start scene, I'm going to modify my, my project, right, to include a, an object called game. I'm going to go back to objects. I'll make another object called game. And my game object is going to be in the module objects. And instead of exporting my class, right, I'm not going to do that. I can export anything I want. I can export a variable. So what if I had some kind of variable that I kept track of, right? Something that I can go to. It's not a configuration. It's a game object, right? Now, I could make this a class, right? But anything inside that class, that'll just be the container, right? So I could say something like this, export class game. Here's my game class. But inside my class game, my class game will not have constructors. My class game is going to hold static objects. So I can do something like this, public static, right, in my game class. And one of them that I want to have is my stage. I want to have the access to my global stage object. So stage, right, which is of type create.js.stage. Think about this as a container that I can always access from anywhere, right? A global variable, if you will, right? I also want to have public static, an asset manager. Here's where I'm going to do this. Here's my asset manager, which is of type createjs.loadcube. That's very, very helpful for me as well because I can keep track of all my assets that way, right? And public static, some kind of current scene, right? Current scene. Now, I called it current scene. I need to rename that in my game. But for now, I want, I want you to think about it as the, the current scene, which is of a type number. That's what it is. It's a, it's a number, 
that I'm going to keep track of, which the current scene is. All right. So this is something that I want to think about doing. And I want to bring this into an object because my game object should be kind of like, it's going to hold my stage, my asset manager, my current scene. I got to make this and I got to put this as part of my index.html. Let's do the let's do the reference. It's going to be at a very high level before everything else, right? It should know about that. So I'm going to say script source. And we're going to say slash scripts, slash objects, slash game. This is my game object. It's going to hold some information about my game. You can also think of it as a config, my game config, but it's really my object that I hold. All right? That's one. And also, just for completeness, I'm going to go into my core file, and I'm going to go into this references, and I'm going to put it at the top here. So I'm just going to copy this one right here. And I'm just going to put another one, another copy, and I want to keep track of all these things. So scripts, objects, game. Right, so I'm gonna keep track of that. Which means that in my scene class now, going back to my uh, start scene, I have access to my scene. Right, I can just say something like, um, you know, I want to switch my current scene, and I in my uh, start button, right, my start click method, I could say something like, you ready for it? Objects. Dot game. Dot current scene. Is equal to config dot scene dot play. It allows me to set my current scene anywhere I want, right? So when I click the start button, it's going to change my current scene to the play scene, right? Now we need to do some pre work for this as well, because somewhere in the core function, here's my core function, right? My core stuff. And let me get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. My click me button in my core. There's not going to be anything in my core. I need to set this up. So I'm going to say current scene is config.scene.start. But guess what? This current scene is not going to be here anymore, right? It's going to be my game, my objects.game, objects.game.currentscene, right? So this is going to be different. And that means I don't need this. I'm not going to keep track of it here. I'm going to keep track of it on a global level, right? So I set my objects uh, dot game dot current scene to the start scene, and then instead of my current scene, I'm going to check my objects dot game dot current scene, right? Which is the one I'm going to be switching. So that's a that's a fix for me, but I need to be able to detect the changes that happened somehow. So yeah, I stage update. Here's when I stage update. But wouldn't it be nice on update that I can detect when the scene is changed? So when the scene changed, you know, if it's not, if um, whatever I return, right, is not equal to my current scene, then I call my main. So how does that look? It's like something like this. I want to, I want to say something like, uh, if here's my here's my pseudocode, if uh, the scene, the, cur the the scene that's playing, scene that is playing, returns another another current scene, right? Then call main again and switch the scene. That's what I want to do, right? Yeah, I'm not ready yet. Not your, but I'll, I'll push it for you. Sure, I'll say. Uh, Created scene class because that's what I, uh, I've just done so far. I'm not finished yet, though. Here it is. So lots of little changes. I'm not finished yet, though. So if I go back to my scene class, if I go back way down to my start scene, right? You can see that I do this objects .game currency is equal to play. I've done that, um, and in my update method, instead of returning void. I want to return a number, right? And that means I want to return, I could return the current scene value, right? I could return the current scene value. Or instead of returning a current scene value, I could check to see if my new scene, if the, if the current scene has changed, right? 
if the current scene has changed. So if I return a number, that means I have to return the current scene, whatever the current scene is, like something like this. There's many ways to do this. And I can return a, the value of objects uh, dot game dot current scene. I could return that. I'll keep track of every 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 frame. I can return the scene number, right? Okay, cool. So this is my start method. I have a couple of things I added in, right? And I have my click button that that does that. What I want to do now is I want to create this in my index. So here's my index.html, and I have my scene class, my scene objects, and here's my actual scene itself. So script dot source, and I want to call this dot scripts dot scenes uh, start dot js. Right, so that's adding that in. Again, just for completeness, I'm going to my core reference.ts and adding that in as another reference because I'm building up my references of objects. So screen, so scenes. And then instead of scene, it's going to be called start. I need that. And then inside my core game.ts, my game.ts, I need to do a couple things, right? Um, I need to, I know it's lots. That I'm doing here, but this is the way you have to set up your your, your stuff, right? I want to create a new scene, so I'm going to say something like, "Let start scene," right? I'm going to, I'm going to instantiate this thing, or uh, and actually, um, I want you to think about something else. Instead of me instantiating a start scene, I want to instantiate a new scene object, right? So something like my current scene, right? So instead of my current scene being a number this time, I have two current scenes. The current scene that's the object, the number, which is in my config, uh, my game dot, um, dot current scene, that one. But there's also this current scene, which is going to be of type um, scene, which is uh, objects dot scene. Right? So my current scene is going to update. Every frame, I'm going to update my current scene. It's going to be done right here. right? And I can say uh, if you know uh, my current scene dot update, if my current scene dot update, right? So I'm going to update my current scene this way, right? If it returns, if it's not equal, right, to my uh, objects dot game dot current scene, something's changed, right? We know something's changed. Then what I want to do is, and let me just see that why, why this can be an error. Um, it says operator not equal cannot be applied type of void and number. Did I make my update void? Current scene dot update. Oh yeah, because um, inside of my scenes, my objects dot scene. This is why it has to work this way. I have to for now make this a number instead of void, which returns some current scene. We'll save return zero. Just to satisfy the requirements. So what this means is that when I go back to my game.ts, I'm going to check to see that they're not the same. And if they're not the same, then I'm going to call main. Right? Because main is going to switch things again. Main is going to go through here and switch. Right? Again, I do it differently every, every time we get together. But I found that this way is not so bad. So how does this work? I got to do all this. I got to remove all game objects from the scene. I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say that uh, uh, stage dot remove all children. That removes all, all everything from the stage. That takes care of this one. Instantiate the new scene object. So I'm going to say that current scene is equal to a new um, scenes, right? Now, again, notice that scenes isn't coming up. And that's because if I go to my scenes object, I got to make sure that this says scenes. My module says scenes, right? Here's my scenes module, right? It's going to be scenes.start scene, right? That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm trying to make, right? Scenes.start scene. So here's my game.ts. So scenes start scene, right? And I'm going to pass in my, for now, I'm passing in my asset manager. I don't have to do that anymore, but I'm going to pass it in for now. I'm setting it up later on so I don't have to. 
right? And then what I want to do is I want to do stage dot add childs my current scene. So that adds my my current scene to the stage. Takes care of this stuff. I'm removing all children. There's nothing on there. And then I'm instantiating a new object and putting it onto the stage just like normal. And you're probably not with me anymore because once I've done all these changes, you're going to be like, what the hell? Right? I'm going to explain it again next week. So it is what it is. Now, notice that I have a bit of an issue, right? Because if I refresh, you can see that my application is starting, right? But, you know, here's where I'm changing my, my start scene. I'm objects.game.current scene is what I'm switching. I'm calling my start scene and I'm adding my start scene to the stage. Here's where I'm adding my start scene same because I'm actually instantiating my new start scene and putting it on the stage, right? Okay, so that's what's really happening here. Just to make sure I'm looking at the right demo because I got a couple of them going on. I'm just going to restart this thing because I want to make sure that I don't have an issue. I want, I want to see the error. If I want to have an error, I want to see the error, right? So, so here's what's happening. Initializing my start. I start my start of my application. That's in my start method, right? Let's go there again. So I'm going to go back to my thing. Here's my start method in my uh, core game.ts, right? So it comes up to here. Let's, let's follow the logic through, okay? So here's my init on complete, I start, right? Start calls this, loads the stage, right? It in that, in, in, initializes my game.current scene to my start, which is zero, right? Then I call my main. Main gets called right here, which forms a switch. It switches whatever my current scene is, and then it says case my config.scene.start, which is, if you notice zero, it's going to remove all children from the stage. It's going to create my new object called the start scene. It's going to add this start scene to the stage and it's going to um, go back, right? Now, what I need to do somewhere, right? I'm, I'm saying if my current scene update is not equal to this, then main, right? And this is where I'm getting into trouble because it's never getting to the update function, right? Here's my state up stage update. Okay, so I'm checking to see if this is different. If my current scene dot update is this, and my current scene dot update, as an example, this one here, my current scene isn't doesn't exist yet. You gotta be careful what this does, right? Because this actually low it should return the same thing. So let's do some checking. I'm gonna do a console.log. These guys are waiting outside. Uh, whatever my current scene is, let's 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 do what my current scene is. Current scene, uh, sorry, objects.game.current scene. Objects.game.current. I want to see every every frame what what this thing is. That current scene. Okay, so I should see zero all the way down. So I go back. I should see zero all the way down, right? What am I seeing? I'm seeing nothing, which means it's never getting here. Right? Because I'm sorry, my application. And I'm never getting here. If I put a console log up here for updates, watch this console log update, right? Now this is going to go crazy, right? Because I'm going to see a bunch of updates, right? So you can see that that's getting here, right? But it's never getting here because my current update, I need to actually update something, right? So this doesn't ever compute because my current objects.game.current scene, if I put this out here in the, in the open, I should see zero everywhere, a bunch of zeros, right? Zero, 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 like this. Because it's starting off at the main, as the main game scene, right? But it's never getting here because my current scene.update is not, it is equal to, it's right now it's equal to this, so it doesn't do this, main. It never does main. And, and by the way, does this update do anything right now? Does this update do anything right now? So if I go back to my start update method, here's my update method. All it does is it returns the game, but it physically doesn't do anything in my update method. Like in my update, it doesn't actually do anything. 
right? I'm not doing anything in my update. To test this, to see that it's doing something, let's put a console.log start update. And if I was to do that, you can see that start update's being called every frame. Every frame, my start method is calling. I'm just not displaying anything here. OK, so I'm calling it. I'm not displaying it, right? How come? So now we're going to we're just doing some troubleshooting so you can see. So well, I know why. I know immediately why. Because my start method is never being called in my scene. My start method never being called. It's got to be called by my constructor. Now if I call start in my constructor of my uh, start scene, you're going to see some other things, right? Some other, other problems. OK, now it's giving me some update thing. It's saying that um, can I read property update of undefined, right? And this is in tween.js, but this is not the real error here, right? This usually tells me that I haven't added something to the, uh, the read the width of null for a button, right? Why? Because I don't have a start button. Remember, there is no start button. I never read it. I never loaded it in. And why? Because if I go to my core scene, sorry, guys, one more second. I don't ever load an object called start button. So let's oh, let's make one really quickly. I mean, really super quick because I'm well, they're going to kill me outside. Right. So here's this. This has got to be start button, right? And it's going to be looking at something called start button. Well, just to be really quick, I'm just going to go and remake this button. So I'm just going to kind of go down here. I don't care about the error right now. Inside my scenes, I'm going to have my assets. I'm going to have images. I'm going to have my my click me button which I'm going to pull up with my fireworks. And inside my fireworks, we're going to have to end soon, guys. I'm sorry. Inside my fireworks, I'm going to have a new button one day when this kicks off, right? And all I want to do is change my click me to start, which I'm going to make centered. Right, and you can do that by changing the properties to center. And I'm going to save this as start button. So it's not going to be beautiful, but I'll save it. And this start button now, if I look at my code, has some kind of start button, which is the thing that I wanted. And if I go back to here, I do have a start button now. It does work. And I'm passing in the reference to my start button inside my scene. So that's definitely not a problem anymore because I'm loading it up now, right? And just to make sure that that's loaded, I'm loading my start button, which is right here, right? And in my scene, which is in my scenes.start, right? I have access to my asset manager, which got instantiated, right? And what I'm doing is I'm saying something like, my start button is going to be this asset manager start button. I'm passing this start button in, and that should instantiate my objects.button, which I do when I do it up here, and then I add my start button to the stage, which is right here. Okay, so somewhere I'm having an issue between my start button and everything else. I'm not getting an issue anymore, so I don't have, you can see that I don't have a problem, but still I'm not displaying my start button. More troubleshooting more troubleshooting, which I don't have time to do right now. So next week, we're going to continue this, my finite state machine, to finish off, where I'm going to fix my issues. I'm going to download a new project, week four, fix it, and we're going to get to that state where I can move from one state to the other. But I'm just prepared. I've created my, my scene uh, right now. I know that's a lot, and I know you probably have a lot of questions, but next week we'll, I'm going to attempt to answer all of them. Okay, We're not going to do a presentation next week. It's all going to be coding. All right, so I'm going to say added uh, start scene, B1, because we're not finished our, our start scene yet. Huh? I know, I know. Don't worry. We'll get it all. I'll go over it again next week in detail, okay? I know, so that's it for now. Um, let's get together next week. Remember that next week I've changed the due date for your 
a submission for your GDD and uh, for next week, Saturday at midnight. Okay. Uh, good luck with that, guys. Hopefully the new teams that are formed are going to work out, and we'll see you next week.